Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for a double edge discourse. I am joined by Reed, the Lather Whipster. How are you doing, Reed? Good. Nice to meet you, Matt. Yeah, nice to meet you. Well, Reed's been a longtime customer. He's, gosh, he's been coming out to see our shop since the beginning. And yeah. now he's got his own social media following. He was in town this weekend. I said, you know what? Let's just do something fun. Let's do something exciting and let's do a double edge discourse. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Without further ado, I think we should uh, I think we should lather up. Let's let's do it, man. All right. So going in with some uh, this uh, pre-shave pre-shave bar. You know, I uh, I saw an extra pre-shave bar on the sink, and I thought, hey, Mr. Reed, have you ever tried a pre-shave before? This is the first time. All right. I think you're in for a treat. So how is this made? Like, what is it? Just uh, is it's like it regular soap, or it's an activated charcoal base, glycerin base kind of thing. And the idea, I like to just put it right on, and it, as I always say, it multiplies, amplifies, exemplifies any other natural soap. It'll kind of make it blow up even more. I find that the pre-shaves are really good when, um, when you don't have a shower before your shave. Yes. And so uh, the, the goal here is to really soften up the whiskers and expand the whiskers out so they're easier to cut. Absolutely. And I always tell people, you know, shaving on a little film set like this is always kind of <laughs> somewhat miserable because we don't have the benefit of just getting out of a steamy shower and you know all that yeah. kind of prep you're getting. So anything we can get uh, is beneficial. Do you have any favorite pre-shaves you're using at home these days? Um, I'm familiar with uh, Phoenix Artisan's uh, shave cubes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, uh, you know, I, I use them sparingly. Right. Because I have, you know, I come out of the shower and then I go into my awesome shave and stuff like that. But when I'm traveling on the road, I definitely take a, a pre-shave cube with me. Seriously, you know, I, I actually, I went on a cruise to Alaska and I brought that, it became my face soap and a pre-shave soap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, for, um, for soap today, I think we both have yep. razor and pouring products, of course, now. <laughs> I'm using Heritage. And I'm using um, Razor Emporium's 2023 Summer Editions Shaving Soap. This is uh, by a soap maker. Her name is DJ, I believe. DJ. And uh, so she makes these really cool um, variant labels, which I absolutely love as a collector of shave soaps. And um, this is just awesome. This smells like watermelon lime with menthol. So this is definitely going to burn. <laughs> yeah, mine's just a kind of a traditional barber shop scent. Um, yeah, you know, DJ has been making soap for Razor and Pouring for five years. And um, she came to me about two years ago and she said, you know, Matt, I, I really love making the, the formulaic, you know, Razor Emporium stuff. I think it's enough. It's good. Yeah. And she's like, but I, I just feel like I, I need my, I need a spark of creativity. I need to do something different. I feel so, you know, in a rut doing the same soap, same recipes all the time. I said, well, what do you want to do? And she's like, let me have, let me have like a seasonal. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, I just want to have a, like a one-off where I'm completely in charge of it. And it's my call, it's not yours. <laughs> I said, go for it. And so these seasonals are her creation, her labels, or everything. She really enjoys it. Nice. Well, it's, um, I know that um, in the shaving communities, like on Instagram and on YouTube, like the collectors really, really like to use um, uh, one-offs, uh, variant labels, and stuff like that. So stuff that you normally can't get, you know, um, on a seasonal basis. So. Um, I find that I gravitate towards these these one-offs as well. Nice. Mm. All right. Lathered up. I may have used a little bit. So. <laughs> wow, it is flying, everyone. <laughs> they call him the lather whipster for a reason. It's whipping it around. <laughs> He, he, that black shirt is black no longer. It is speckled. In fact, I think I'm getting some whips of it over here. <laughs> this is like a, a performance art. A little bit. I call it a modified bowl whip. Okay. It actually comes from like, I used to use a lot of shape bowls back in the day, but um, I just ended up, uh, I usually clean myself off like this. Sure. Those of you guys who follow me over at Shave Cape on YouTube will know that I use this technique. Um, I started using this technique called the Lather Whip in 2016, and uh, it's just, um, for me, it's a little bit faster than using shave bowls, because with shave bowls, you know, you have to, like, you make the lather in yeah. the bowl and stuff like that, and so I just needed, I needed something that was fast. Right. So I could get out the door, because 
Classic shaving really is a, um, a little bit longer than, it takes a little bit more time than say cartridge shaving. Sure. So there it is. All right. And for your razor of choice today, oh, I think this, we have the same razor. This is an awesome one here. This is a, uh, well, I, I kind of want Matt to tell us about this because <laughs> when, I, when I first met, met Matt, um, um, he had a shop in, you had a shop in Peoria and uh, you first started off reconditioning razors. Mm -hmm. And so in 2015 for Father's Day, I purchased this uh, Gillette Fat Boy from Matt. Okay. In his Peoria shop. And he, I remember he only had one left. <laughs> And so um, I'll always remember that purchase. Um, I do remember you coming into the store. I remember you, I think you had your dad with you? My mom. Or your mom with you, okay. Father's Day. Fat Boys are the most popular Gillette razor. People always ask me if I'm gonna redo, a, you know, a razor or buy a vintage. Yeah, I'm using the, the Permasharp. So he's got the, he's got the nickel finish. And I got the rhodium. In fact, this is just a good opportunity real quick. I just wanna show. For the, in regular light, it's always, you know, one thing with studio light or uh, pictures, but you can see the difference. The nickel's more of a gray finish. The rhodium's more of a white finish. You know, Fat Boys are so popular. It's always been our most popular razor to refinish. And um, people love them because they're adjustable. They're big and kind of beefy feeling. You know, you get the butterfly action, adjustable. And it kind of feels like driving a classic car. It's just, it's really popular for a good reason. My father actually lost his classic fat boy Gillette that his mom purchased him. So the reason why I bought this one in particular is because it's the exact same year mm. that he had. Okay. And I, I remember you told me that and I was like, I want to get the exact same year. Yeah. And this was a Father's Day gift and he absolutely loves it. I don't think he uses it that much, but he, you know, cause you know, classic shaving is a skill. It is. I, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I have, Obviously, my family knows I'm into shaving. It's been my, my career for about a decade now, and it was a hobby for five years before that. My own father won't touch these things. He always says the same thing. Oh, those are scaring me, or they, I got bad cuts and irritation, or nicks, I couldn't get a good shave, or razor burn, whatever. Um, and I hear that a lot from, from older people from the last generation, and I always tell them, like, I think part of your bias may have been the, the blades. Because if you go back and use a Gillette Blue Blade, they're not fun. Like the blades today, we've even done shootouts. Like the blades today are so much more comfortable. So I think people may have had a bad kind of uh, experience. Yep, definitely. I was carrying a Nick stick because I always invariably nick myself. This is a styptic pencil. You guys will use this for your nicks if yeah. you get them. Um, I'm using a new blade and typically when I use a new blade, there's some nicks. Mm. So. My, my best shave, personally, is like after maybe the second or third use of the uh, DE blade. Now, what, um, what blades have you experimented with? Pretty much every single one of them, man. Really? Herma Sharps, yeah. I've, I've been doing this now for about uh, four years, camera shaving on YouTube, about three years on Instagram. So, yeah, I pretty much use every DE under the sun. Imports, um, Egyptian blades, um, Italian blades, uh, some of the Israeli blades are really good. Yeah. I got to ask, what, uh, obviously, you got into what, shaving, I th and what kind of was the impetus for that? I actually learned about classic shaving by studying the Great Depression. Oh, wow. And, and during the Great Depression, you know, a lot, of, a lot of folks wanted to save a lot of money. Sure. And so, you know, you know the old shave sticks, you, you could buy a Colgate shave stick, oh, yeah. and they had an ad that said, this would last for a year, <laughs> and it was like 39 cents. It's all value-based. Totally value-based. And so... Uh, Unlike some of the gobs of money I spend now. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all kind of got into this with the myth of saving money. And it's possible, you know, it's totally possible if you just limit yourself to one razor and one soap and one blade and one brush. Yeah, sure. But what's the fun in that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. I, I have a collection, dude. I probably have about, I, I try to keep it to around 100 sets. Of soap? Of soap and aftershave. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm not laughing at you. Uh, that is just I tell I tell customers all the time. I, you know, and 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 our, I tell our channel, there are guys like you, and now I'm sitting next to one, because that is just the complete opposite for me. Here, I own the shaving store. I could bring home them all. I have two or three at home. It's like collecting baseball cards or like garbage pail kids. Like you want different scents. Um, sure. A lot, a lot of companies now are putting out like the variants. Uh -huh. You have, um, you know, one-offs like you'll have new aftershave splashes that come out. 
you have different companies, and, and that's the thing. There's there's like a new company every year now. Oh, I know. So. The shaving. We were just talking before we started shooting about the shaving market, and I've seen it expand and get bigger with more people, and I've seen some collapse. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've even seen some. Um, what do you call it? Like where a couple companies have acquired each other, or. Yep. But no, I mean, um, you know, I, I just. Uh, I just felt I, I found classic wet shaving in about around 2012. Okay. And um, my sister, um, her her husband's Italian, and for my for Christmas um, in 2012 they bought me a uh, Parker 99R. Okay. And so I first used it and I actually didn't like it. And um, because it just it didn't it th these do not shave like cartridge razors. No. Like th there's you have to with cartridge razors. The angle is is predetermined. It, the the angle will move with you. Mm -hmm. With this, you have to maintain the angle on your face, on your chin, right. on your neck. And so, um, what you taught me, Matt, was um, uh, Matt was the the, the first uh, shaver who introduced me to what's called a grain map. Ooh. And a, and a grain map is where like every shaver's hair grows differently. Yep. And so we as shavers, we have to figure out what our grain map is. And so. To learn that grain map, I started watching a bunch of shavers on YouTube, and um, you know I, I had to pretty much teach myself what my grain map was, right. how to shave, where to shave, and so like like you know like underneath my chin here, I only I only do a cross pass like that mm. because because just right here in the specific part of my chin, the hair grows that that way. Right. It's really really weird. Oh yeah, I always tell people it, it's it's completely different, and everyone's got their own like you said grain map, and they have their own kind of challenge to figure things out. Yep. And so, you know, I used to do like uh, two passes, three passes, but then I figured like just one good pass is good enough for me. And, um, you know, I just, I, I come back and do a few stuff here and there, but um, I mean, that's pretty much it. The shape's pretty much done. So I got to ask, you know, I know why, I, we're, again, we're talking about this off camera. I know why I do these videos. They started as a, as they... <laughs> They started as a way to be lazy and, and direct customers who asked a question to a video because I would get the same questions a lot in, in my email box. They'd say, how do I do this? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? You know, what's the technique for this? And I got, I, got, I got tired. I got tired of answering the same emails again and again and, and having to write out paragraphs and paragraphs and describe stuff. And I said, I'll just make a video and then I can send that customer. Next time I get that email, I'll just send them the link to the video so it was a way for like to answer customers' questions. That's why I do these videos, and they've, obviously it's changed into reviews and tutorials, and I, we can announce new products here. But why did you get involved with filming yourself shaving? I, that's kind of a, a mystery to me. So um, I I noticed that um, around 2000 and between 2005 to 2010, there were some. Um, just a, a group of wet shavers who were beginning to put their stuff online. I'll drop some names here. So like sure. Anthony Esposito, right. Ray Pope. Yep, I remember those and, guys. Uh, and uh, a few others, I think uh, IMCDB or I yep. Rather. And, um, and so I, I was seeking help to figure out, you know, how these guys attack their grain maps. Okay. And um, they were also introducing me to other products. Okay. And so that I just found that absolutely fascinating. But here's the other aspect of it. Like, it is affordable. This is affordable luxury. It can be, for the, sure. The, these are like, this puck, this puck here will be like $15, $20. Yeah. I mean, I, a guy like me can afford that. Right. So um, so they call it a rabbit hole. So I fell, I fell, <laughs> I, I fell down the rabbit hole. And then um, yeah. you, you go to a meetup and you see all these shavers. And uh, you're, you're, you know meetups, trust me. Yeah. And um, I just became completely fascinated by it. And, and I was like, there's a class of shavers out there who are like, they're like um, athletes. Yeah. That they 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 know gear. They, they some of the, some of the guys know straight. They're superstars. They're, they're superstars. Yeah, I and, hear you. And I wanted to be one of them. Okay. And and so in you know in 2016, um, I I was uh, I was in college at the time, and I I figured out that I could lather my face. I could create this real thick lather because <laughs> that that's the thing about lather making is there's sort of like a friendly competition. It's like who has the best lather or who can like. Yep. A lot of the guys that I seen at the meetups were like, um, they were just manly men. They were just really, really cool. They were like yeah. guys who were into shaving. They were guys who had like these really cool hobbies. And, and I wanted to be part of that. <laughs> and so now I am. There you uh, go. 
Well, that, yeah, I, I've, I've noticed your channel. I've seen you on social media. And, you know, when you told me you were in town, I was like, hey, we got to do this. Um, and we're hoping to do more of these videos with other guys in the community because I think it's unique. And, you know, like you said, you're sharing, sharing your knowledge, kind of sharing your tips and tricks. Yep. And that the ladder whipping is something I've never seen before. And maybe you're the maybe the originator of it. Um, um, I'm pretty sure I'm the author of the technique. But, um, <laughs> I love it. I I, I, I know some. Um, I, I just I've never seen it before. Um, you get a lot of lather. I mean, I, I probably use a little bit too much water. Water, and you'll see that with the technique, I can still wring oh, yeah. out a lot of lather. For sure. Because um, the, you know the technique of whipping the lather actually creates the lather not only on your skin but actually in the brush itself. So I could go on and do a full, probably a couple more passes with this, which I won't. So just tell me about this scent really quick. <laughs> the whole idea was like you're going back in time and we looked at some of the most popular scents of the day uh, in the 50s and we found a couple that had a couple of these, these same notes. Dondra, again, our, our soap maker DJ, Dondra Jones, she found two, three or four and she's like, hey, let, let's do this. And I thought that's a great idea. And we threw it together and it's been extremely popular. The soap is a tallow base, whereas this soap, the Razor Emporium soap is, is a vegetable base. Uh, so we kind of cover both grounds and then the splash. I had to make the splash look old school so we we did the the blue number one i think it is to add a little color to it liquor bottle yeah and it's got alum in it i think and, and witch hazel uh -huh. and so it's it's uh it's actually really good for your um for your skin too yeah rose extract whoa <laughs> <laughs> wow he's talling down guys that's how you dry it off guys Classic wow blown away over I'm here sorry, i love sorry. it i love it <laughs> uh, yeah no uh it, it's been popular. In fact, that was That's the really good. This was this was the first product we made when we got this denatured alcohol. We were using a different product before, and then I, I got I had to get my alcohol license, and I went down to the out the, the chemical supplier, and I got a fifty gallon drum of denatured alcohol. And I remember bringing that back to the shop, like cautious, like don't get in a car accident. It was in the back of my truck. Oh, yeah. It's huge alcohol barrel. I kept on picturing explosion if I got rear-ended or something. I don't know what would happen, but it's good stuff. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I do, I do. So we're taking this home and I'll probably end up reviewing this on YouTube as well. Cool, very good. So one thing I appreciate about Razor Emporium is that you can get your, your grandfather's uh, shave piece and have him completely re refurbish it in two-tone. Yeah, sure. In a, was it the dull or the, the flat? Yeah, factory or premium. But. And that's cool because this sort of like this this saves the heritage, the tradition of, of what our grandparents left us. Yeah. And so I absolutely, absolutely love having this piece. But what I did not expect that you did was you took it to the next <laughs> level. And I, I now, now Matt's Matt's letting me take this to review, guys. I just absolutely love it. Tell me about this razor. Then, then, and then that's the only question I have. Sure. Um, well, I think a lot of our audience knows, you know, working around vintage razors for a decade or whatever it was and, and collecting them, it was pretty hard to constantly look at someone else's work and not be a little bit inspired to want to do something yourself, leave your own mark on the world. If, if our only mark was revamping razors, I would be content. But I'm, I'm a pretty... Um, competitive and, and driven guy, if you can't already tell. And um, I was like, let's do something ourselves. So we came out with, with Rex as a, as, a, as a different brand outside of Razor Emporium, and it stands for Revisit Excellence, and as a whole idea of looking at the past and being kind of inspired and driven to do something just as cool. So we came up with the first razor was the Ambassador, which was, uh, was and still is the only American-made adjustable stainless steel razor on the market. Um, now I think that'll be that'll go away once Shane from Blackland comes out with his adjustable. Okay. Right. But I'm holding that title for five years. Nice. <laughs> that nice. was 2017, um, and then we had a follow up, which was this the the Envoy. And I'm sure uh, our audience has seen it. I'm, I'm sure your audience will see it soon enough. But the idea was to have a, a three piece version of that, where it was non adjustable, just a fixed angle. The Envoy is to be just a three piece. And it's, it's a, it approximates the ambassador around setting number three. So if you like, which is the most popular setting, it's one through six. Right. Yeah. So, and, it's, and people always say, oh, it's too small. I always tell them it's the same size as a fat boy. And I, I based off our measurements, I'm like, you know, this was the most popular vintage razor in its day and today. And let's, let's have it be similar to that. So that's the Envoy wow, uh, stainless steel three-piece razor. That is beautiful. And so, so one thing I really appreciate 
appreciate about Matt is that he's extended this tradition to where Gillette doesn't make these anymore, at least right. as far as I know. They have the King C Gillette, but it's made by Moolah and it's right. zinc alloy. That's right. And so um, I could get a timepiece that I could pass down to my kids. Yeah. And so that's what I really appreciate about this. And you warranty these. For life. You back these for life. Yeah. They're cataloged. They're numbered. That they're serial stuff. numbered, yeah. They're serial numbered. And wow. These are like seriously CNC'd. Yep. They're Very cool. And everything's in-house? The machining is done in Phoenix, but uh, the we do all the laser engraving, tumbling, brush finishing, packaging, all that's in-house. Wow. Maybe at some point we'll buy our own machinery and bring it in-house, but it's it's a very expensive endeavor. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Very cool. Well, Matt, I really, really appreciate you uh, inviting <laughs> me on. Yeah. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, um, the video when it's up. And yeah. guys, you got to check out Rec Supply Co. when you're in Phoenix. You got to come to a meetup next time we have one. We'll have one in February of 2024 for sure. There you go. I'll be at the Northwest Shavers meetup in October. I'll be there too. <gasps> yeah. Heck yeah. So, All right. Uh, Northwest Shavers meetup, guys. Yeah. So. We'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for tuning in to Razor and Pouring. Please like this video if you liked it. Share it with someone else out there who needs to see it. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Reach channel. Please shout out your channel. Uh, Shave Cave on YouTube. Lather Whipster on Instagram. Cool. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.